Hey, hey guys. guys! Welcome back to our channel. It is official. By the time this video gets posted, the channel name should be changed from Lori Dawson to Lori and Thomas because now we're going to be doing more videos together. So excited. Yeah. And this is going to be a book review. And this book that he's going to be talking about, he briefly mentioned in our wrap up video, and that is. The Mountain Man. And he wants to really give a full, spoiler-free review, and he asked me to be in this video with him because I'm going to be asking him some non-spoilery questions to maybe help you decide if you would like to read this book or not. So, Thomas, what is this book about? So, as you can see, it's by Keith C. Blackmore. I'll put this down so I don't get in trouble. <laughs> All right, so this is about Augustus Berry. And he lives his day-to-day -day life. He's had some traumatic experiences since the end of humanity. When I say end of humanity, I'm talking about the fact that it was a post-apocalyptic zombie-topia. Mm. Mm. In Basin, Canada. Now, he has a huge stockpile of alcohol, so he spends his days in the apocalypse getting drunk, gathering resources, fortifying his defenses, and did I mention he still has electricity? Ha ha. So, you have corpses disappearing. You don't know why. You have people that are all dealing with the apocalypse in their own ways. So, Lori and I might deal with the apocalypse different. You guys all might deal with the apocalypse different. And it changes you as a person, just like wartime changes people. He would so, know. <laughs> makes you think. All right. So now that he's given the synopsis, my first question is going to be, how is the world building? At first it was kind of slow, but it picked up. It was actually based out of a real place, assuming that the author actually was from that area because he did a pretty decent job with the description. Is there any character development within the book? Yeah, but it took the entire two books. You saw the character kind of lighten up and then delve into the darkest depths of humanity and then lighten back up. So would you say morally gray then? I am extremely morally gray. Um, depending if the person was someone I would like, I would either let them die if I didn't like them to save hundreds of thousands or say if it was Lori, hundreds of thousands would die so I could save my wife. Oh. You're so sweet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's such a romantic. So you really like these characters because they are very great I, I depending think, on the situation. I think they're more relatable because once you put a character or a person into those types of situations, number one, they don't know how they're going to react without being in that situation. Number two, no person is 100% light and no person is 100% black or dark. When it comes to morally gray, I think that that is very, reality. Very realistic, yes. so to speak. So, since this is like another zombie book, how would you say this is different from all the other oh zombie post-apocalyptic books out there? Alright, so are you thinking like The Walking Dead? Yeah, like The Walking okay, Dead. So like how can this, like I guess, separate it? Basically, you have your regular zombies. You have your zombies, they're slow, they're moaning, they run in packs. Because humanities are humanities pack animals. We prefer to have people around us. Obviously, they rose from the dead. Bites. Um, they don't know how it started. Which this is none of this is spoilers because this is every zombie apocalypse. The difference I'd have to say is it was honestly it felt like it was written from a man's point of view. The fact that they could survive. And they knew the struggles, and I would I would honestly ask if the author served like military. Do you think it has kind of like a military? I think it was a survivalistic person. Survivalistic. And most of the survivalists that I've met are military background, mm -hmm. and then they took that further. So you can see that kind of. Yes, I can. I can see that in that book. Okay. And I always look at it as the author either is one experiencing their wants through the book mm -hmm. or they are showing their experience through the book. I never thought of it like that. That's, That's how I've always read it. Because oh. your viewpoints are always going to go into your art form. Okay. And writing is an art form. Oh, this is true. So 
You didn't find this book boring at all. The first two chapters, it was kind of rough to read because it was like the everyday, the guy got up and he passed gas and scratched his man junk. <laughs> and it was kind of like, is this how this is going to be? It's going to be very crude. And I feel like I'm past that. Mm -hmm. And at 26 years old, I should be past that considering I'm married with two kids. But... After that, it kind of got away from that and actually got to the, holy crap, this guy's going to get eaten. So, overall, would you recommend this book to I anybody would, that's into post-apocalyptic I would recommend it to anyone that reads zombie and post-apocalyptic books. It was definitely worth the read, and it kept me on my toes. Alright, guys, that is it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed it, and we hope to see you again in our next video. Bye, Bye guys. guys.